Hello, Kansas and Western fans. It's time for update number 35 of the construction of the Kansas and Western HO scale model railroad. Uh, I'm going to try something new today. Hopefully it's not too distracting, uh, but you're going to not see a number of post-it notes uh, stuck everywhere. Uh, I've been doing these videos for quite some time now, and after almost every single one, I realized I forgot something. Because uh, usually I do quite a bit in terms of updates, a uh, little here, a little there, whatever. So I've stuck post-it notes everywhere to remind me to speak about a certain uh, subject or location or whatever. So we're going to try that this time, see if it's annoying or obnoxious, but at least I won't forget anything. Anyway, uh, I was tasked the last two weeks to work on structures. So we're going to go all over the layout again and do a tour as we go and speak about all the different structures and things that I've worked on over the last couple weeks thanks to the voters. So as always, we'll start down here in the Royal Gorge route, even though there's no structures. I did work on a little bit of something. Uh, I know that no other model railroader in the world would ever do this, but when I'm out shopping for things that I need for structures, I sometimes find other things that find their way home with me. Uh, I'm sorry, that just happens sometimes. I, I it really, it's, it's a bad habit. I can't help that. Anyway, uh, what I've been picking up are some trees. Um, trees are not something that I see trying to make by hand anytime soon. Uh, so I've just been buying small little pouches at Hobby Lobby and Hobby Town here, things like that. But I've been wanting to try to lay these out to see how they might look as a blend in uh, for uh, this backdrop and in other locations. And I'm not to the point where I'm even drilling holes in anything to put them in the right place. I'm just kind of standing them around, see how they may look. And I, I kind of like some of these. Uh, they're not super expensive. Um, well, they are if you buy thousands of them, but I don't plan to do that. But, um, and there you see a post-it note. Anyway, uh, so I've been buying a few of these here and there uh, just to see how things might look. And so I've added those and I think that might work once I you know trim the base off and stick a you know drill a hole there I think that's actually going to blend in quite well for this particular backdrop so kind of excited about that but that's for a future work work day anyway uh, moving around uh, there is one thing I'm going to call out because I just saw this last night and uh, one of my viewers from Australia pointed this out uh, because he had seen it in the middle of the night, and I just happened to see it in the middle of the night. But in the Royal Gorge route, not far from the Gorge Bridge, there is actually a bridge that was built to allow a creek and uh, snow melt to pass over the tracks. And it's kind of a unique engineering uh, feature there. Uh, the Hanging Bridge, obviously, is the most uh, famous one. But what I'm going to do is build that bridge. Uh, and I had planned in this area to build a little waterfall uh, one of these areas, I can't remember. Yeah, that's it because we have this drain here. Uh, so I won't do that because I already put the drain in or the drain pipe in, but they're culvert. But I think in one of these other areas, I'm going to carve out uh, another cut and put that bridge in because it's just a simple concrete bridge. It's uh, It looks more like a walkway bridge than anything else, but very unique item that I want to add to the gorge uh, just because I think it would be kind of interesting to add. So anyway, moving on. From the Royal Gorge route, we wrap around into Canyon City. Nothing new there. This seems to be the new part of the layout that I'm putting off until the very end. But uh, you can see I've added some fencing there. Uh, that was featured in one of my uh, review videos. So I went ahead and painted the rest of it and added it at this station and over at the uh, Lamar train station. And I really like how it looks. Um, it looks very nice. I'm going to go ahead and buy some more to further isolate uh, the parking lot, which will be featured on either side of the train station, uh, and uh, just to kind of delineate where that's going to take place or be located. So anyway, moving on from that, from here we go to the Portland cement plant. Nothing new here, except I wanted to talk about my spur off into my workbench. If you guys have been watching for a while, you've noticed that the cars here constantly change. And if you've seen almost all of my videos from back from my uh, very first few when I had a workbench set up and just a folding table, I mentioned that uh, one of my pet peeves on layout videos that I see, including my own, is when you are zoomed up on a car close enough that you can see black trucks and metal wheels. 
And that is the very basic form of weathering that I take care of as soon as possible when I get new cars to the layout, which I'm still way behind from all the ones that I've collected. But over the course of all these construction videos, uh, or the weeks that I work on them, I'm still weathering or painting those trucks and wheel sets and couplers, and I get about two cars knocked out a week. So that's why these cars are constantly changing. Every single car that you see on the upper level has had this done. And, uh, and that's why you see a lot of cars over there in La Hunta Yard that have been sitting there for a long time is I just haven't gotten to them yet. So just wanted to mention that, still working on that. Um, it's kind of therapeutic because I have a system down. Uh, it doesn't take me very long to knock out a whole car uh, in terms of both wheel sets, but still working on that. Anyway, moving around. I'm over here to Pueblo. And I finally got something done in Pueblo. Excited about that. So, uh, this is called the Everaz Steel Plant. This whole uh, section here. Uh, that's the name of the company that owns the Pueblo Steel Plant. There might be another name, I'm not sure. But that's the one that I've done some research on. And I've got this kind of uh, gantry crane. I can't remember what the actual name was. But uh, this traveling crane that uh, travels along these uh, beams. Uh, to unload uh, rail guns or gondolas, sorry. Uh, haven't quite decided how I'm going to flesh this scene out yet. Uh, there is a particular photo that I haven't gotten taken yet that I want to, that I'm kind of modeling after for this scene, where uh, loads will be transferred from gondolas into the steel plant structure itself. Just not sure how I'm going to work that out yet. So I'm going to have to spend some time to figure that out. And that's why I still don't have track laid in this area because I'm just not 100% sure how I want to do this uh, section. But anyway, moving on from there, I've got some more trees here in this corner. And I didn't want people to forget that I do plan to do a partition between this switch lead for La Junta and the main line to kind of hide this transition point. Because in reality, La Junta and Pueblo are not that close, maybe 20, 30 miles apart. And on my layout, they're about 100 feet. So um, not only are there going to be trees here, but there's going to be a hillside cut that will be built up uh, two, three, four inches high. So if uh, one were looking from La Hunter Yard uh, back to the west, they wouldn't be able to see uh, at least a good portion. Of, they wouldn't be able to see the track at least. I can't hide any structures or backdrop, but at least you wouldn't be able to see the track. So the trains will disappear for at least a brief moment to kind of uh, oh, carry through that transition. Anyway. Moving down, we'll hunt a yard. Nothing else new here. Still haven't worked on this low hanging fruit of uh, finishing this bridge or this loading dock, so that's something that still can be worked on. And then uh, it's going to take a full work session to figure out what to do with this trestle area, bridge, whatever this is going to be. Wrapping around to Lamar. And you can see I've added just a couple of these fencing sections here to do the same thing that I've done in Canyon City to just kind of partition off the parking lot and definitely surround this locomotive to keep the hoodlums off it. Anyway, um, one thing I did finally get done, I did finally custom cut this grain elevator kit uh, to kind of simulate this seed oil refinery in Lamar. So that's what it looks like uh, if you're looking down the tracks from west to east. Uh, so this is how I'm going to have it look from head on. Uh, there'll be obviously a, a conveyor system on the top and uh, some of that piping that you'll see. And I built this uh, grain bin here uh, to go along with it, although it's much larger than I expected. And I want it to be kind of recessed back a little bit. Not sure if I care about that or not, but... It's really just to hide the seam and my poor cutting ability. You can see there's quite a bit of gap there uh, between the backdrop and the silo. So I was gonna put a couple of these in on both sides to just kind of hide that fact. So not sure how this is gonna continue to develop, but I finally got that cut to fit with my handy dandy little table saw. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, I did finally get this last grain bin built. So all four of these in are in place. I just have to build a conveyor system that will tie those in with either a uh, truck loading um, elevator behind them, which you won't really be able to see because there's not really any room to represent that, or tie them in with uh, the old elevator here. 
So more to come with that. Wrapping around to Holly, I did get an old style elevator installed, or at least started. Uh, I have more work to do on that, but if I'm going to continue to fill this scene out here, uh, I think it's actually going to represent more this end one here, which I know it doesn't look like it, but this would have to be totally scratch built because it doesn't really look like an elevator. Uh, no silos or anything like that. I think they're internal on that structure. So um, this other thing here, I'm going to add, actually add those tanks with a small conveyor, uh, just like that looks. But I might move that over here too. I'm not sure. I'm just glad I finally got an extra structure added to Holly because it was looking kind of bare. And I also bought my first uh, crossing signal. So kind of excited about getting that installed and operated or operating. Moving along up to Holcomb Power Plant area. I did make one decision up here because I was tired of looking at it. I decided to start taking these down because the ability to blend in the spur for the power plant as compared to the main line coming off the helix is going to make a lot more sense and look a lot better uh, covering this gap here with an embankment and trees than it was going to think than it was going to look to have a sudden uh, hillside cut that this power plant was just nestled in to hide that. So I'm going to take all the rest of these out here and all the ones behind and then somehow in the back I just have to figure out how to kind of hide the track coming up. Uh, I'm not going to be able to put road bed underneath just because I have to maintain that incline. I'm not, a hundred, not too worried about that. It's still going to be uh, ballasted and uh, it's not going to be a big deal to pull these screws out. Um, and I'll just glue the track in place as it is so I can still make it look okay. Obviously paint the plywood so it looks like ground. Add ballast on top, remove the screws, paint the track, and that should be okay. I think that'll look better than just having this roundish hillside cut that this thing is going to be nestled into. So I feel better about that, and I appreciate some of the feedback uh, that people have added for that. Moving around to Garden City, nothing new here. And then we have Charleston Elevator, which the only thing I've added here is this fall protection system that I featured on a review video for Whistle Stop models that 3D prints these things. Uh, and my latest, uh, or my first rail fanning jaunt, if you saw the big boy video, I, I noticed in the background when we were waiting for it to cross uh, our location uh, in Topeka was how far those rail systems go. I mean, it was hundreds of yards away uh, down the siding along the or past the elevator. So uh, that was kind of eye-opening. I wasn't sure how many of those I would need. So at the very least, I'm going to run this all the way along the elevator and probably to the end of this siding. And then uh, I have seen some on video where they'll even do it on adjoining sidings. And all that is is so guys can walk across the top of the rail car safely and open all these lids that there are on top of the cars. And also close them. So sometimes you'll see these things on past the loading bay so the guys can walk on top and close the lids safely. So looking forward to adding more of those. I really like how they look. I think you did a good job making those. So more to come on that. All right, from there, wrapping around the main line to the Wichita Industrial Park, which I obviously made several operational videos involving this area. I've gotten this track up and running, so I'm excited about that. And the same thing for Clean Harbors. Got that. I got a structure started. And uh, by the way, that's called All Metal Recycling. So I'm going to try to start using their proper names. And that's Star Lumber Distribution. And of course, Clean Harbors here. And I think m many people have commented and have noticed that I don't seem to finish any of my structures. And there's a reason for that. Um, my brain doesn't work um, well enough to use mock-ups or to just take measurements. I have to actually build kits to some degree to understand how they're gonna interact with my scene, how they're gonna interact with the tracks, and how they're gonna just interact with each other. And so uh, it's just a common theme on my layout where I just don't have any of my structures built. Now some might be close, some might not. I still haven't got that painted yet. I haven't got details added to the top, but I want to make sure that I'm going to uh, and like having a particular structure where it is and how it looks before I go to the trouble of finishing it completely. 
And then there's the other thing where I still haven't got backdrops installed in them most of the layout. I don't want to mess with uh, picking up delicate structures over and over, trying to do measurements for backdrops and so on. So I'm just trying to get them basically finished with primary structures so I can get an idea of whether or not I like them there. So don't worry, I will be finishing everything, but all in due time. All right, moving along, uh, still haven't done anything uh, else with uh, the Cargill plant here and might start calling that the ADM elevator. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Archer Daniels Midland, if you don't know. But moving around to the BNSF yard. Nothing here. And we'll move around to the other side. And I just, I always like this shot. It just looks really cool. Moving around. Here's the UP side of the yard, nothing new on this side. And the transition to Tawanda. I did open one of these boxes finally to get an idea of what the kit will be. I was kind of surprised you have to actually build the motor mechanism inside with all the gears. Uh, not the actual electric motor, you still have to buy that, that's a separate thing. Uh, but that whole... Uh, that chunk there, you have to assemble all that. So that was kind of interesting, but still looking forward to build these. I'm going to have probably two of them that will operate. And then uh, you can see here, I've added just a bunch of trees that are just standing in place. And this is just to kind of help better illustrate that I'm planning these different scene dividers so it all doesn't just blend together. Uh, there'll probably be a very low rise here. Uh, and there's going to be a kind of a cut where years and years of blowing dust and dirt have built up on either sides of the tracks with trees on either side and that's what these little um, pencil scratchings are on the other side represent. And then we have the Mears uh, fertilizer plant with another scene transition between that and the Eldorado Industrial Park. I did get started uh, with some more on this chemical distributor for the Barsol Chemicals and BG Products. Got all the primary uh, walls painted up but I'm running into an issue because the, the the structure walls there represent this shipping building here on this layout and um, so you've got the tanks which is there that feed in to this building and there's just not room for that between I've got a runaround track well here's the main line here's uh, the siding that feeds Barsol there or BG products. I haven't got that straightened out yet either. And then here's the siding that actually will feed uh, these tanks here. And it just doesn't fit like that. So um, it's not the end of the world. I'll figure out something, but it's going to take me some time to figure out how I want to modify this kit so that it will fit in this vicinity here. Um, and it's not, I'm not worried about moving track or anything like that. That's not really something I'm willing to do. Uh, but moving structures around to different ways to make that work, it'll work. Uh, I just have to spend some time thinking about how I'm going to make it work. Anyway, moving on to the other refinery. I did add another tank. I got one of those uh, wider tanks. Not 100% sure this is the location for these tanks yet. Um, and that's why I kind of like just setting things up so I can walk by it 50 times and glance at it and, and decide, do I like that there? Do I not? Can I think of another idea? But that's the way it's set up for now. Um, so far, so good, I guess. And then um, I'm going to probably change this trackage a little bit here. I've been looking at a lot, at looking at that a lot, and haven't been horribly happy with it. So I've bought my first curve turnout, which just arrived today. I just got this thing set out for this video, and I think what I'm going to do is pull uh, the loading rack a little bit closer to this edge. And that's going to allow me a little bit more track uh, availability and space so I can have a mini yard uh, for tank traffic here and also for some uh, open hoppers for the uh, pet coke uh, part of the refinery which this curved one here curved track here is going to feed that but then I think I'm going to have two more pieces of track also curved down to this area here basically just loaded up with uh, tank cars um, so I'm kind of liking that idea. I just have to get some more track laid out to do that. 
And then uh, I think the final thing for this update, which there's been plenty already, but I did get another one of these uh, racks built and I mentioned how I was gonna try out a new idea to make that go together better and it did work. I basically uh, trimmed the flanges off the bottom of these piping segments that are supposed to fit right around those cross beams, but that was making it um, difficult to make these supports fit on the walkway right. So I will definitely do that for the rest of them uh, is just to trim those flanges off. And so it just sits on the top there. It will fit just fine, uh, but it makes the walkways fit a lot better. The one thing I didn't remember is that if you're gonna string a bunch of these together, you probably don't need to do uh, both supports end to end like that. So I have a few more of these kits that I'll add and this thing will fill up this whole um, empty spot here between these two tracks. Uh, maybe five of them total, I'm not sure. But that's these would be double track loading uh, in this fashion here. But lots to review there. Hopefully that wasn't too much for one video. But I'm already liking the post-its. I don't think they're too distracting, but they're reminding me to talk about all the things I want to talk about. So anyway, that's it for now. We will open up the poll for this weekend. Uh, put in the comments below your vote for what you would like me to work on for the next two weeks. I will compile the results on Monday, shoot an update video. To share the results and also my work plan for making all of that happen so share in the comments what you'd like me to see or what you would like to see me work on for the next couple weeks and we'll see what i can get done after that thanks everybody for your comments questions and opinions and have a good weekend